Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You've just tuned into the Sussex Squadron channel, your number one source for all things related to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. If you're new here, we extend a warm welcome to you. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and join the Sussex Squadron for regular updates. Today, we're diving deep into the intricate world of the British royal family, retracing Prince Harry's footsteps during his last visit to England and exploring the hidden narratives behind King Charles's unusual invitation to Harry. So, without further ado, let's delve into the fascinating world of the royals. We hope you enjoy the video. Ever wondered what happened during Prince Harry's last visit to England? Let's take a trip down memory lane to September of last year. It was a whirlwind of 48 hours with Prince Harry making a pit stop in England before jetting off to Germany for the Invictus Games. His agenda was tightly packed. The Well Child Awards and a solemn visit to the crypt of his late grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II, were at the top of his list. The awards event, honouring the courage of seriously ill children and their caregivers, was thoughtfully arranged to coincide with his visit. Harry's sombre pilgrimage to St George's Chapel, where he paid his respects to the Queen, went relatively unnoticed, with only a handful of tourists spotting the Prince. Interestingly, during this short visit, Prince Harry did reach out to his father, King Charles, who at the time was residing in Scotland. A request was made for a room in Windsor Castle, which was denied. However, the King, in a move that raised eyebrows, tried to coax Harry into making a day trip to Balmoral. Balmoral, the private residence of the British monarch in Scotland, has been a place of fascination and intrigue, not just for its majestic beauty, but also for the secrets it holds within its walls. King Charles' invitation to Harry was, unfortunately, declined. This rejection did not go unnoticed. Buckingham Palace was quick to make sure that this information was widely disseminated following the conclusion of the Invictus Games. Despite the invitation, Harry did not visit Balmoral and the palace made sure everyone knew about it. This episode, though brief, gives us a glimpse into the complex dynamics within the royal family and sets the stage for the events that were to follow. Balmoral has a significant place in the history of the Windsor family. Picture this. A castle nestled in the Scottish Highlands, its granite walls standing strong against the test of time. This is Balmoral a private residence of the British royal family since the mid-19th century. Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, smitten by the rugged charm of the Highlands, bought the estate in 1852. It was Albert who commissioned the construction of the current castle, which was completed in 1856. Balmoral's significance to the Windsors isn't just about its historical roots. It's also about the traditions it's fostered and the memories it's housed. The royal family has spent many a summer holiday here, engaging in activities like hunting, fishing, and simply enjoying the serene beauty of the Scottish landscape. But Balmoral isn't just a site of carefree family vacations. It's also been a stage where some of the family's most intricate dramas have played out. One such drama involves Prince Harry. Over the years, there have been numerous attempts by the Windsors to isolate Harry at Balmoral. These attempts, while not always successful, have added another layer of complexity to the relationship between Harry and his family. Some might say that Balmoral serves as a microcosm of the royal family itself. It's a place of heritage and tradition, of love and conflict, of unity and division. It's a symbol of the enduring legacy of the Windsors, a legacy that continues to evolve and captivate the world. Harry has mostly managed to avoid these attempts, but it seems that might change soon. As whispers of a potential summer invitation to the Sussex family circulate, the question remains, will Balmoral once again play host to another chapter in the Windsor's family saga? Only time will tell. There's a buzz that King Charles plans to invite the whole Sussex family to Balmoral this summer. This news has been circulating like wildfire, causing quite a stir among royal enthusiasts and the public alike. But let's take a moment to look beyond the headlines and delve deeper into the narrative surrounding this invitation. Now, Balmoral is no stranger to royal family gatherings. It's been the summer holiday home for the British royal family since the reign of Queen Victoria. It's a place steeped in tradition, where the royals can escape the public eye and engage in their favourite pastimes. 
But the question that's on everyone's mind is, why now? Why extend an invitation to the Sussex family, who've been living their lives independently across the pond? The plot thickens when we remember a previous decree that was allegedly made by Charles, stating that no black people were allowed at Balmoral. This news was met with a storm of criticism, sparking a heated debate about racism within the royal family. If this decree was indeed true, then the invitation to the Sussex family, which includes Meghan Markle, a woman of black heritage, is a significant departure from this earlier stance. So what can we make of this? Is King Charles trying to mend fences with his son, Prince Harry and his family? Or is this a calculated move designed to quell the controversy and improve his public image? The Sussex family, for their part, have not yet responded to the invitation. Their decision to attend or decline will undoubtedly be closely watched and scrutinised. But is this invitation a genuine gesture or just another plot? The narrative that King Charles wants to see his grandchildren is making rounds. This statement has been echoed time and again, painting a picture of a doting grandfather longing for the company of his kin. But is this narrative rooted in reality? Or is it a mere facade, crafted for public consumption? Let's delve into the past actions of King Charles that seem to contradict this narrative. The King, supposedly eager to spend time with his grandchildren, has shown a pattern of behaviour that suggests a different story. Actions, after all, speak louder than words. Remember when the Sussexes were evicted from Frogmore Cottage? This wasn't just a house, it was their family home, a place where they envisioned raising their children away from the prying eyes of the public. This eviction wasn't just about a piece of property, it was a clear message to the Sussexes, effectively pushing them out of Charles's sphere and with them, his grandchildren. Hardly the actions of a man yearning to see his grandchildren, wouldn't you say? Moreover, the King's past behavior towards his grandchildren has raised eyebrows. Shunning them, putting them in danger, these are not the actions of a loving grandfather. Instead, they paint a picture of a man who prioritizes personal and political agendas over family ties. A man who uses his influence to manipulate narratives and control perceptions. The narrative that King Charles wants to see his grandchildren is a powerful one. It appeals to our emotions, tugs at our heartstrings and paints a picture of a family torn apart. But when we peel back the layers, when we look beyond the headlines and the public statements, we see a different story. A story of a man who has consistently acted in ways that contradict this narrative. The narrative seems to be far from the truth. As we navigate the winding paths of royal dynamics, we must remember that actions speak louder than words. And in this case, the actions tell a vastly different story from the narrative that is being pushed. The summer storyline of the Windsor family is anticipated to revolve around the Sussexes' visit to Balmoral. As we look ahead to the warmer months, whispers are already circulating about the potential plans of the Windsor family. The spotlight is particularly focused on the Sussexes, Prince Harry, Meghan and their two children. The question on everyone's lips is, will they accept the invitation to Balmoral? There's a sense of suspense a curiosity about how this chapter will play out. Will Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, make the journey to the Scottish Highlands? It's a question that has both royal watchers and casual observers speculating. But the intrigue doesn't stop there. Will Meghan Markle, whose relationship with the royal family has been fraught with tension, be invited? This is another layer of the narrative that has yet to be revealed. We know that past visits have been a source of controversy, so it's possible that this summer could bring more of the same. And what about Lilibet Diana, the Sussex's young daughter? Will she be included in the invitations? As the youngest member of the family, her presence at Balmoral could be a significant step towards mending the fractured bonds between the Sussexes and the rest of the royal family. These are the questions that are shaping the anticipated summer storyline. It's a narrative filled with uncertainty, and yet it's a narrative that holds the potential for reconciliation, for healing and perhaps even renewal. But as with all stories, the outcome remains unknown. 
Will the Sussexes make an appearance at Balmoral? Will Megan be invited? Will Lily be welcomed? These are the questions that will keep us on the edge of our seats as we await the summer months. Only time will tell how this storyline will unfold.